Let's fucking go. Holy shit. Oh. Let's go. Yo, that's so fucking hard. Damn. So that's the first time we like reacted and saw the magazine together. Okay. Um, so it's like, you know, we've been putting it together for the past year. Yeah. And this upcoming Saturday, um, we're doing like a fashion show with all of our new clothes and old clothes that we're putting together. Yeah. Which at the time like sounded like a really good idea, like a really good idea. Basically as like the weeks kept like progressing of like us like trying to like work on like every issue and stuff like that, it like had become like more clear on how like much I like didn't want to do it. Your friend is doing something big for his brand and for his magazine and like this is the time you take to make shit up and make a scene. This show is the one year thing. It was the most awkward fucking thing I've ever fucking experienced in my entire fucking life. Good times like this documentary was an uphill story to the highest degree and there's nothing that was interesting in it. Which one is Tate's room? <laughs> I was like, Berkeley ain't never been scary, but I ain't never held 20 k of equipment outside Berkeley. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, this is the start of the dog. Yeah. Welcome to 1988 California. I'm going for school and shit, but like. Hey yo, listen to this when the sun's out. I said, girl, why you keep calling? I said, girl, why you keep calling? Yeah. She said, I need a new whip. Yeah, cause I know that you're still balling. She just wanna go back to the future, so I brought that girl a DeLorean. 21 minutes until I gotta go, so I told that girl I'm gonna slaughter it. Uh, yeah, I'm out front of the sign. Okay. Are you? Show me the sign. Uh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So we would just like see each other at these events and shit. And um, I like saw him at this like hotel room party and I was like came up and I was like, yo, do you know this person? He was like, oh fuck, yeah I do. That was like just like a two minute like interaction. And then um, we just like keep like seeing each other. We had like seeing like mutual friends, all this shit. I didn't know who he was. I had that conversation and I was like, who the fuck is this kid? and why does he wear checkered pants? So like that conversation like ended that and then I kept seeing him at like parties and stuff. <laughs> why are you doing this? Nelson, are you mad? I mean like, it's like, I wouldn't do it. Thank fucking God. Damn. Holy shit, what the fuck did I do? Okay. That is the coolest thing ever. Yeah, nice to meet you by the way. Oh yeah, for sure. Never sees her again after this trip. And one specific night, um, we had made like fake passes and Nelson was just in the friend group when it happened. My name is Owen Donaldson. You can follow me on Instagram at Owen oh, yeah, Or bitch. just even going, ah, fuck, oh, oh, ah. Hey, Owen, oh. And we're like partying, having a good time. And then one person convinced 
me to jump off the balcony for like views. Yo, your hoodie, bro. Your hoodie, bro. Your hoodie, bro. You ready? And I'm banned, I was banned from Florida and I was banned from the hotel for life. And um, it was all because of Nelson. We like didn't like hang out until like Flogna 2016. And like that's when we became like pretty good homies. And then we just like, that's like how, how it kind of all got started. Okay, sorry, can we do that really quick? Mm. Can we listen really to Denzel really Curry? Do you have like a good speaker? Question mark. First Van Nuys shit, it was after, like, not like fresh off of, but like pretty much after Flaw and All 2017. Me and Tay were like talking every day on FaceTime, just about like fucking all, like whatever the fuck. That's like all this like other shit. And then we would just like hang out. I, I'd go to LA, he'd go to LA, all this shit. We'd take all these pictures and We'd have all these dope candids on like film, but it's like we would never like post them or anything. That's like kind of like how like the whole idea of Good Time started from like those pictures. No, I like deleted like a ton of pictures from, from when I was like cringy. So you're gonna post every day? No chance. I don't even post every day. <laughs> uh, unless, fuck, guys? unless if we get the fucking flame pictures this trip. Picture. Yeah! <laughs> Until I was going to do a show for Nelson was going to DJ it. Like some like dumb shit was happening like back home. I didn't want to be in my town um, for my birthday and shit. I thought it'd be like cool like, to be elsewhere and all that stuff. So then hit up Tate, I was like, yo, like, do you have any plan to like be in LA or whatever? He was supposed to do this event that I was like, okay, like, I'll like come and, we, and we'll like kick it. I'll like help you out. It seemed like a sweet idea, and then they got caught for ticket scamming. So um, we were now in LA with like no one. And like that fell through, but we already had like this whole trip planned out to like stay with Grace and Van Nuys, all this stuff. Um, and this was before I even like knew Grace. bonded really fast, like all three of us really, really quickly. And it was really easy to spend all that time together. Loved being with you guys. We ate a lot of food. <laughs> I honestly didn't expect it to be as good as it was. Like, really? <laughs> I kind of expected it to be like some half-assed, like laminated scrapbook, basically. It was actually really, really dope. Except that you guys did two page spread about my period. Damn. Nelson. <laughs> you definitely did the, but I really liked the letter. You guys wrote a letter to me in that that I really, really liked. Because I just felt like, I don't know, I felt really accepted into the friend group really fast. It was nice. Aw. <laughs> Say what, what you just said? I said you looks like a little bitch. <laughs> Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> After that, that whole like event thing fell through, we just like filled up 
like that, like those like five days, like every day we'd have like some sort of like activity planned. So like we like rode bikes in Venice, we, we, we went on a hike. And then we'll kind of just like kick it with like grace. <laughs> Socks times, bro. All right, LA kids ride bikes for the first time. Sebastian hasn't ridden a bike in forever. Nelson's never ridden a beach cruiser ever. Yeah, and like that's how all of like the pictures that were used in about 001 to, to like 003 happened. Like none of them turned out well. And I mean like they were all like the sickest pictures ever. Like me on bikes, Grace on bikes, fucking like us eating food, palm trees snowboarding like all the sweet stuff we did but like none of them turned out good nelson and i are like making video edits and picture edits and you know a little like collage turned into a collage with like a quote on it and then a quote turned into like a few words and then a paragraph and then it kind of looked it didn't look like an instagram post it looked like a magazine oh fuck me oh my god Oh my god, they all X Games mode. After doing that, and it looked like weird and it looked cool like a magazine, I hit Nelson up and I'm like, dude, you should make a magazine. So when Tate texted me to, um, that he wanted to start a magazine, we like got on FaceTime all that shit. And then Tate was like, yo, we need like a dope name and like a dope graphic. And I already, and like the two days before that, I was already making the 001 graphic and cover. Like, and like, I, I didn't even know it yet. I was just going to get them printed for myself and just like sell them like on Twitter or whatever. So then when Tay wanted to start a magazine, I was like, all right, like, I think I'm like, I'm like already onto something. When I finished the graphic, I like showed Tate and underneath it, it said good times because all the pictures that were in the graphic were like of a good time. So it was like, so then like, I was like, yo, like, I th think this could work. And he's right, they were all good times. Like the pictures consisted of like us riding bikes in Venice and um, being in my hometown and the Tyler Crater concert we went to, like all in the span of a week. So it was like a perfect layout for the name. And Nelson thought it'd be yellow. And a little background's like, yo, Brockhampton bitches love yellow. So when they see a good time magazine, you're going to think of a Brockhampton bitch that likes fucking yellow. And it's like, all right. And that's our target audience. So, and that actually happened to be the target audience. So, I mean, like he was right on one thing. All right. Take two. Uh. Oh. oh my God. It's on. Oh my God. That's it, that's it. It's a box. Pull it out. In a box. Let's fucking go. Holy shit. Oh. Let's go. Yo, that's so fucking hard. Holy shit, dude, the fuck. Oh god, I already know this next page. Oh my god. When I walk in, but I'm right next to the ass for it, I just take next. I'm going to get my ass for the address. I'm just going to get my ass for the baddest hit. I'm going to get my ass for the baddest hit. This page kind of looks like shit, but still. That's crazy. Dude, it's here. That's fucking nuts. That's ridiculous. That's like. I don't know, kind of like the idea of us as like putting out a magazine that like no one's really done before was like pretty exciting and then you know like no one really like gave a fuck at that time like we, like it was just like a fun fun ass thing to do so like we were just like let's write a fucking story about us like robbing a bank and that's how, how, how we became friends and then like use just like all these like other pictures and shit and then from there we like got the, the idea to make it like t-shirts and then have Tate's friends shoot with the shirts. The first time that Dylan wanted me to shoot with friends, they got like cars full of people and shot for issue one. And it was like, what the fuck? Like, the first time I was like that was like when they all went to change in the bathroom and then they came out and they were wearing good time shit and it was like the outfits I made and it was like, whoa. So I got to shoot those videos, edit those videos. Those came out the first week. You undress me Doesn't matter now far where we be Fuck that attire, baby This ain't designer, 
Our friend Matt gave us a song that he had made and it was like pre release. <laughs> So when it came down to it, we wanted to make an issue two, but didn't know how to do it. Yeah, so that was damn near a car accident. Oh my god, dude, that's crazy. Um, we wanted to make an issue two, but didn't know like how to do it or like where to start. And because no one fucked with us, it kind of started like if no one's gonna fuck with us, we're gonna fuck with people until it kind of happened. We ended up just like planning like on another trip like mid April. So uh, we can like meet with like new people and uh, get like a sense of like what we're gonna be writing about in like the second issue. Right off the bat, um, one of our friends like scheduled a business meeting for us. Yo, so we're back in LA. Um, if you guys don't know, we're working on the magazine. Good times, Mag. What the fuck is up? Woo! Today we got a business meeting. That's why I look like a fucking dad. We're gonna um, we're gonna meet up with um, someone. I, I don't know. So we're gonna get fucking breakfast. Bang! Breakfast went well. Meeting went well. And it was like the first time anyone was ever like interested in us. So we like talked to him and we charged him like 20 bucks a page for the magazine, which at the time was like. Crazy. Yeah, dude. And it's so good. We lost so many deals and so much money, and it was all his fault. Like 20 bucks for a page, you're kidding me. And he was wearing a Jaden Smith shirt, and then we're like, whoa. He's cool. He's cool. Like, this is sick. He's like, hey, did you know that Jaden um, is having like a record label party tonight? And we're like, are you serious? He's like, I can't make it out, but if y'all are going, then I'd be like sick to like, if you guys wanted to go. We were already planning on going to the beach that day with Grace and shit, and like, that was, was trash. The beach was trash, but we got like that really good, like that really fucking good video of Grace. Remember that? Oh yeah, my shot was fucking solid. That was that's like one of my favorite shots ever. That is like, the, the issue two rocks. trailer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It literally came down to timing, and we're like, we have to go from, was it Laguna Beach? Laguna. Laguna all the way to Calabasas in like yeah. 45 minutes. Yeah. And we like changed our shit real quick, like dressed on the side of the beach, and I like- I hi wasn't changed. I literally had to hightail it down the highway, like yeah. like 100, I was going like 120 or some shit. Yeah, I made you not go 100. I'm fine with going fast, but like, I saw like the speedometer go over 100, and I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like chill, Tate. Yeah. And it ended up being a album release party for Teo. Man, that'd be like cool if Jaden was here, and we like yeah. sit down, we're already excited enough. We're at the thing now. We got, we got Andrew, we got Jane Smith, we got movies, we got everything. We're walking in now. Do you ignore me because you're a Gemini? We have just enough seats? Uh, yeah, yo, let's fucking go, bro. Oh, we are too hot in the business. About to make a movie independent. And then we literally like turn around behind us in our seat, and the motherfuckers right there. Your brain like short circuited, if I'm being real. Like I've never seen you in that state <laughs> of like utter shock. Like that shit was scary. His ass was right behind us. We just got out of a business meeting, so we're like, Nelson's strapped up in good time shit. I have magazine in hand, like it's good. It's like- We watched these like videos and stuff like that. We watched like the main video. They were like, all right, that's it. Like everyone like disperse. So we all leave. And we just waited in like the lobby of the theater. We see him walk out of like like the theater. So then we just like run up on him with like shove the magazine in his like fucking face. Strapped up. And we're just like, Jane, here's just like magazine. We like worked on it really hard. You're a big inspiration for like both of us. Like it'd be really cool if you can just like have it. So he takes it, he starts like going through like the pages, all this stuff. He's like, oh, this is fire. 
that's really all he had to say was just like to get us like to feel fine. Tate ran up, got some more pictures of him holding like the magazine and all that stuff. We were both just like freaking out afterwards. So to celebrate, we got some ice cream at the place next door to the movie theater. We walk out of the ice cream place and we're just like looking at him. Yeah. And he points at us and goes, Ayo Magazine. We weren't like magazine guys. Like it was like I did YouTube, you did music. So it was yeah. like when he said like, hey, you're the magazine, it was like yeah, really unheard of at the time. And we're, it like took us a second and we're like, wait, we're, we're the magazine. So then we, we me crazy, and we started talking, and he's like, we read this in the in the Tesla. It's like really good. Like y'all took the time. It's real film. It's real storytelling. We need to do a Misfits editorial with this shit. Like pulled us aside and showed us the new music video Ghost for the first time. And like that shit like hadn't even come out yet. Like. Yeah. It's been like a year since he had dropped music at the time, so this was like all in be all like fucking crazy. I just ran honey, I dash. You spent too much cash. Screw your bags. I knew that you wouldn't last. I'm in physics class. I knew that you wouldn't ask. He was like talking to me just like casually. I was like, all right, that's pretty uh. He's just like a solid guy, and like he really like did not care for like the little things that like some other famous people might think or something like that. When the conversation kind of ended after he showed us Ghost, he just goes, hey, just hit me up on the gram. And we're yeah. like, Nelson was like freaking out and I was like, you're fucking kidding me, right? Like Jaden Smith, yeah. fucking 12 million followers on Instagram. Let's just like casually hit him up on Instagram. We try and get the film pictures back. Like we took like all these fucking pictures on the camera that night at Denny's just so we could like have something to like just turn in the camera. Let's just get this shit done. So after all that and we made like the picture edit and we're like, there's no way Jaden's gonna see this. Like we post on my account, your account, the Good Times account, the Good Times Help account and like everything, like he might see it. Yeah. And when it came down to it, we're like just kind of stressing a little bit on like the outcome of it. Yeah. Cause we're both like really scared. Cause this is like a big opportunity. Yeah. And we didn't know like issue two wasn't even close to being finished or even started at the time. So like it was a big deal. And then it came out and it was like, cra he was the first notification. Don't run reminiscing, spit a fire hotter than a pot up in the kitchen. Yo. Yeah. And lately I've been itching to take a rubber on cause I'm really done with all the sneak. Oh, it's in my closet. Oh, shit. 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 Oh, shit.
you know, we got like the idea to do like unisex crop tops and like we had like some crazy videos with those. Yeah, just kind of like do whatever I'm videoing. <laughs> no, don't. Do it for the night, right? Dude, actually, high key true. Rolled out so fast. And like, did music during it? Those sold really well and it's like a crazy piece that was like super out of the box that um, we were gonna do and then we started like really making issue too with like Anthony and yeah. all like the creatives that are like behind it and it was like a grail of a magazine just because it was like issue one was like the organic natural one yeah and this was like the really big like we're like we're on top type shit and like yeah. we were on our high <laughs> we were on our high horse for like yeah. three months after that yeah um, oh, um, so uh, yeah hello Jaden what's up hey you want to meet up later okay cool let's go <laughs> <laughs> There is not one person from my hometown that did not know that Jane Smith followed the account that I co-created and stuff. Cause they all thought I was just like a dropout of school. And it was like, bitch. Bitch. <laughs> we were both on our high horse. We're talking shit on people. We were like charging artists left and right that we honestly shouldn't have. And we were just on top of our shit. And then like people tried suing us didn't turn out well. Now Michael was the CEO of Good Times Entertainment until yesterday. So Michael sent out an email announcing that he's leaving the events world. Second of all, Michael claimed he went bankrupt as a result. We got a trademark. So like we had like a page where we're like gloating about like fucking this guy's business up. A lot of things where it's like, yeah, this shit's sick, but we were dicks in the process. And while we were being dicks in the process, we were still like best friends throughout the entire thing, but we were also like deteriorating like the organicness of our friendship yeah. because we were just being like assholes to the other people and like ruining the process of it, but it was still like awesome. Yeah. With issue two, um, this was right after the whole Jane thing happened, which now like looking back on it, it was like the worst thing that could happen. And uh, because it was very overwhelming after that, with uh, having people like contact us, like for like their artwork to be in it and all this stuff, and blah 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 blah, and like also wanting to like impress Jaden, really like it's like we like didn't know it, but like it really like messed up like how genuine like the first issue was because it was like it was uh, a lot happening at once. So like that was honestly like the worst thing that happened and that's when like things started becoming like more weird at times because like it just it'd be like like so many fucking people in that magazine and it reflected on that trip to April where like we were just like aimlessly going around trying to figure out like what to do and like it was like perfect. It represented like the hype of like all that like perfectly. What's up, fuckers? <laughs> <laughs> we took a trip some somewhere random in Calabasas, and it was like crazy. Cause like right then we knew we wanted to make issue two and keep going. The recording. Issue three was on track to be really, really good. Like, we had just came into like a lot of money with issue two, like a fair amount to like start spending some stuff. So we like got the idea to make like lighters for, like like the summertime, and then, like right after that we like got the idea for like skateboards and like 
coach skater jackets and stuff. It was like really sick. Like I was like really like happy with like a lot of like the designs I was doing and uh, how it was like kind of like coming together. And like we had like really solid like two weeks. Through a fat hotel party with all of our friends that like we rarely get to see. And it was like really, really fun to do that shit. It was really good to see everybody. And it was really on track to be really good. We went to Agenda. And that was like a big like learning experience. We met like a lot of really cool other brands that we were gonna like work with. And we got connected with Always Again and Champion. We like celebrated like 4th of July together and like all this stuff. And like it like seemed like it was a really like set like two to three issues like ahead of us that we had like pretty planned out like to the T of how it was gonna go down. But it didn't. <laughs> so then when issue four and five came around, Nelson hit me up. This stuff's kind of not fair. We got to figure this shit out. Well, I realized like how uneven the workload was. Um, it was like, Taylor had like a lot of like stuff going on with like the magazine, like working on it and stuff like that. And I like had like way, like way less of like, like motivation to like do it kind of. And like, it was like kind of based off like my like location in Buffalo, New York. And, uh, just like not being able to like be like as productive as I wanted to. You know, at this time like magazine comes first and shit. And that was like issue three. And that was like back in August. Uh, so then like what we thought would be like a good idea would be going to issue four and five. It's just to crank those two issues out in the span of like two weeks. And I would drive up to Sacramento to go and work on it. And it ended up being like the worst idea for the magazine possible because I was really excited for this shit. Nelson was really excited for this shit. Basically, as like the weeks kept like progressing of like us like trying to like work on like every issue and stuff like that, it like had become like more clear on how like much I like didn't want to do it. Um, and like how like not, not like, I like wasn't having a lot of fun doing it either. So like, that's really like what I like, came out of like that. And it was like a lot of like miscommunications on like style terms and stuff like that that would go into each like page. Nelson I've been working on issue four uh, all day. Okay. Brain hurts. So we're gonna go to Target, right? Target and Carl's Jr. Carl's Jr. Okay. To get um donuts even though we've already had a dozen today. Nelson got his license a week ago. Big deal. I already have parking tickets. So. Okay. Oh fucking K. <laughs> I'm done. I'm over the video. Um, like there were times where it was like, um, we'd be like working in like Tate's room like all day and stuff. And I like go outside while like Tate was like still working on it. And like I don't know if he thought like, oh I just wanted to like not be a part of it, but I was like on the phone like freaking out my mom, being like, oh, I don't think like this is like what what I want to be doing right now. Yeah, so issue four was like very like rushed. It was very last minute. Um a lot of the models that were like that reached out and stuff like that were very like unexperienced. Was the issue four was gonna be this big ass fucking thing, like we're gonna have models and have everyone do all this shit. And it turned out the exact fucking opposite. Stayed in our fucking room, watched documentaries on documentaries, make this shit happen. I read them and I was like, these were horrendous pieces of shit. Three group chats with ten people in each group chat in different cities in Sacramento. But they all turned out to be fucking have different shoots so we can make this shit happen and one chick pulled up with her fucking boyfriend it was the most awkward fucking thing i've ever fucking experienced in my entire fucking life and her boyfriend was the biggest fucking cunt we were stuck in my room for 52 fucking hours straight that shit made no fucking sense we went out to petco to buy a fucking snake just to get that shit off of our mind like why the fuck would you do that it has specific advertisements for specific models i needed and it said 18 plus. We lost the fucking snake in my house. Angel outside. We didn't know what the fucking type. 15 year old girls would show up in our fucking DMs asking for rides and shit. Lying about their age. Lying about fucking.
like in every painting. And I really like him that much. No one knew how to model. Everyone showed up in ripped blue jeans and checkered bands. The skateboard was in them, and I actually bought the skateboards. Got a new one, found the old one, and no one knew how to read for shit. That pissed me off so much. So beside that, it was actually It's, it, it, all the shit on top of it was so annoying, and we just couldn't take it, and we just put out what we could, because we were done with the fucking project. I mean, the process, like, I can't lie, like, the week Nelson and I had was really fucking fun, and just, like, it was so bad to the point the week was comedic and we couldn't help but just like when we were done shooting some stupid stuff like we'd mope for like three minutes but then we just laugh at these stupid fucking Instagram hoes that just couldn't fulfill what they like said they could. We're at Dairy Queen right now for the 004 book. I don't know if it's going to be a book. I don't know if it's going to be a magazine. But Nelson's here. Yeah. I'm here. The one chick was just like a coach. Like she like was like she liked Russ. Like she liked Russ. Cheaters. <laughs> we shot with like none of our like actual friends. Like we we tried to make it happen. It's like didn't work. Like we didn't even like know these people and all this stuff. And then like basically like a lot of us like trash pictures came out of that like damn those were so annoying to edit because it was like okay you're standing like on the street corner and i used flash to take the picture but like that's still not going to make it into like a cool picture i mean we saw this shit coming and then we started working on issue six and issue six was just mainly like a visual piece i did something with ski mask and uh kill matthew our friend <laughs> During Halloween, my car got lost, so I started swiping people on Tinder to, like, find someone to help me, like, fix my fucking car. And uh, I ended up swiping on this girl with green hair. And while that was happening, I was like, fuck, she'd be very good in this new hoodie. She had really cool green hair, and so she ended up shooting for that hoodie we put out. And through that, we were shooting three days nonstop for this magazine. And we ended up becoming really good friends. And Nelson and I, our all in be all favorite thing for the past three years, four years, has been Camp Flogna. And it's just like where we creatively are like most happy. And we're playing on going. Have you been to Flogna? Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's so rough. Have you been? Or have you, no, not been. Have you um? Have you heard of it? You never heard Wait, of Wait, what? Really? Yeah. Wait, how? Nelson and I have been going, and it's like our like all and be all like favorite thing to do. It's like where we met too, technically. Like kind of like before yeah. we were friends, him and and this chick was like last minute, four hours before, was like, yo, what if I drove with y'all? We took this fat trip to Camp Fognop, met up with Nelson, met up with Matt, and all of our friends. Um, ended up running into Zay at some point. I'm going with Carly, Nelson's going with Matt. What? They get freaking yeah. lit. Let's get your dick in your pants. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is where we're staying for the night. Right. Tell your ones about to go down. Oh, um, we're about to turn the fuck up. Okay, 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 don't get my infatuation It's related to another phone, or what you call it? But oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, I ain't met you I've been looking something, waiting for I stopped to chase her like a alcoholic Now you don't understand me, what the fuck do you mean? Man, it's the rose in the cheeks and it's the Together, we were like excited to like hit each other up after something 
and like work on that magazine and that's where I feel like a change of pace kind of happened but you know things change we'll be like working in like Tate's room like all day and stuff and I'd like go outside while like, Tate was like still working on it and like I don't know if he thought like oh I just wanted to like not be a part of it but I was like on the phone like freaking out to my mom being like oh I don't think like this is like what, what I want to be doing right now like all that stuff so like it was like in like that span of like those like conversations like with my mom was when like I, like it was like everyone was kind of realizing that like things were a lot different um film that <laughs> yeah so dope you know I got an uh, I graduated high school that same week that I finished issue seven and I got an offer from a film school to move out to Berkeley and I can't you know I can't do YouTube forever I can't do the magazine forever I got to focus on something for myself and it was the first time I did that in a really long time so I took the offer and I moved out to Berkeley What up? I live in Berkeley, California right now. I've been wearing this hoodie for three days. This is my first official day after um, my parents and everyone left. What did I do? I just set up my desk right there and then hung up those photos and those bags. During that, you know, kind of really rough transition of moving to Berkeley, Nelson hit me up and kind of let me know, like, this isn't for me. You know, I really like the magazine. I'm down to still help, but creatively, this just isn't for me. And I feel like this isn't something I've been like showing very much and it's something I've been hiding. So like, let's try and make it work. And that's kind of um, where I'm gonna end this interview. Rewind a little bit before um, Vlogna in issue seven. Um, I got a random DM from a mutual friend, somebody that um, modeled for the crop tops, which was his girlfriend, and then another dude that did um, some skate stuff for uh, issue seven. And um, it was just mutual friends and shit like that. And he was like, "Yo, come over. I heard of Good Times. I'm really interested in it." Uh, when I went, came up to him, you know, he had his homie screen printing his stuff and uh, he introduced himself and said, hey, uh, my name's uh, Twell, uh, my real name's Elliot. Um, I have this little screen printing company called Twell Regor. And uh, yeah, I kind of started from there. Shit ton of his homies were like finally at a fashion show um like a week from there with like screen printed thrifted clothes he had um and essentially we just got to chopping it up and um i really liked the questions he asked me and i asked him if he could uh co-produce this documentary i respected how smart he was and i thought that that would work out really well um so we became good friends i went to his fashion show bro I hate to, I hate to say shit, but it was just one big, like, parking lot circus fuck fest, and I just hated how it ran. And very ignorantly and very like douchey, I was just like, "Yo, I could do this better. I'm going to do it better." And um, the day before I moved, um, me, Elliot, and the dudes that ran the venue put together a plan. Yeah, I'm doing another. Oh fuck. Yeah, I'm doing another event um, soon. It's actually my first one in a year, but to sum it up, um, without giving too much away, 
is um, it's with Good Times, um, I, uh, Good Times Magazine. I'm like super stoked for it. I have like, I've been typing up contracts all week and hitting people up and getting a lineup and everything. So I'm like extremely excited for how this event is gonna turn out. Right about the first few weeks of moving into Berkeley, I uh, was like looking around meeting people, trying to see like who I could like link up with and do stuff with. And I ended up meeting this girl named Sarah and eventually she became my girlfriend. Okay, I'm Sarah. I'm from New York. You know how it goes. Um, <laughs> me and Jay matched on Tinder like last January. And then we linked up on January 27th. I know because it was my brother's birthday and I was wearing cow pants. Yeah. But before everything went down with good times, like you were super passionate about it. Like you had all these copies displayed in your in your apartment and like you were just like showing me everything, like super passionate about everything you were doing. And I thought it was dope. Like you really made a name for yourself and like the story you were telling me about like Jaden and how you guys kinda got started and now it was like, I don't know, what was it, your seventh? edition or something i thought it was really cool so yeah sir and i used to like go out and like kiss and be like mom what like random shit like that but moving to berkeley shit just was not working out how i wanted it it was just one bad thing after a fucking other as soon as i met tate i feel like i gave him bad luck which is weird because i don't have bad luck myself he got locked out and the guy had to repair it whatever chop the doorknob off and this man's like is trying to open up his crib with a screwdriver <laughs> like that shit was bad funny but so that was another thing that happened and that was everything before the fashion show just until one week when it was the weekend we were supposed to uh, go to LA. He had just copped a new whip, the Honda. <laughs> Shouts out the Honda. The uh, car got stolen. My car got stolen. Yeah, my car got stolen and that shit sucked dick. And Elliot was just like, nah, we're gonna fucking make it happen. We're gonna go there. We're gonna take a bus. And I was like, yo, that's tight if you're super into this documentary enough to like take a bus and go down and still make this shit work because I was ready to throw in the towel. Baby, baby, hi. Going to LA, good times dog. Oh, good times, dude. Thanks for it's coming, good, bro. It's good times, baby. We went to LA and, um, you know, they got to meet Nelson for the first time. We got to hang out, make the dock. And funny fucking thing with Elliot is we were either best homies or fucking mortal enemies. And there was no in the middle because like, we would get in like these really fucking heated arguments and like, these weren't just like fuck you, fuck you arguments. These were like damn near about to kill each other type arguments. And with that, they would like get solved in like five minutes like that. But when they were going on, it was like lethal and fucking bad. And someone was gonna fucking die at one point. Fucking raspy ass voice because all he does is fucking smoke once all day. And that's so, just how that shit works. So Cody. Nah, you just look stage fright. I don't think that at all. No. I just think he... Alright, I'm gonna just say it now. Tate, you are fucking tripping on this dog right now. <laughs> I'm not, I'm just, I'm literally saying over and over again. Let's do so it. with that, it was like, that was normal. But in this LA trip, that was like the pinnacle of Ellie and I arguing. That pissed me off. I never got it. You had a fucking moment. Hey, that out loud, Nelson. Really? What? So I brought a group of different outfits for the dog. Did I say that? When we were on FaceTime and I was making spaghetti. I don't remember anything. I don't remember anything. Dude. I know. So whenever I tell you the story, it really don't matter what I say because you're not gonna get off. It was a lot of creative differences and some of the things that I didn't agree with Elliot Nelson would agree with and you know I was like, okay, maybe I'm wrong here. Um and then like we all made like the soundtrack to the fashion show over at Nelson's place later that night. So that was cool. So we all kind of, you know, got to agree on one thing and you know. Nelson and Elliot hit it off really well.
so with that said um you know after that trip shit got a little weird it's now the week of the fashion show a uh, week before and we're all in sacramento and we're doing the rehearsal and for some reason nelson was just like a little bit off and i couldn't tell why we're going through doing the rehearsals having people sign contracts and all of a sudden elliot starts blowing up the group chat you know he's having another one of our arguments but in a public setting this time it didn't end in five minutes like the others and it was more like fuck you i'm gonna run your shit up if you don't go and you know pull up at your place it's gonna be on march 16th at the fashion show blah 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 and everyone at the fucking rehearsal is just fucking laughing except for nelson because he had some sort of connection to this shit and everyone's just like yeah fuck that guy he's not gonna be a part of this fashion show we don't need him whatever so with that said um elliot is not my friend we finished the rehearsal went amazing nelson was gonna go to my apartment and we were gonna work on this documentary and you know close last minute shit to uh make this happen um in a week i check when i got to my place to see uh if Nelson was at my uh, apartment, he was the exact opposite direction and actually at Elliot's house. And that's when shit got interesting when I woke up. This morning I had a panic attack and that's like a really rare thing to happen for me. And my face is, my face right here is swelling up just real bad from the occasion this morning. and. Nelson didn't return back to see my apartment for the first time when we we're supposed to be working on the documentary like right We're supposed to be editing this right now. It's six days till the show Yesterday he was being a dick so I literally just put in the group chat he will not be showing up to the show It basically just turned into a big text conversation into just like fuck you fuck you I'm not showing up here, I'm not doing this, and honestly, weren't, we weren't friends, but we made an agreement, and he's coming here any minute right now, and we're going to talk about this, because it's not worth, this isn't worth losing my best friend, and whether, you know, he hasn't done work since issue three, you know, 50-50, and he, you know, he doesn't think he's needed because he's not doing the work, you know? Fair game, but I feel like ditching out six days before our one year thing, I, I just feel like it's stupid and fucking childish, but everyone has anxiety. I can't, I cannot relate, so. It's fucking, it's gonna suck, so. We're gonna have to figure it out. The definition of anxiety that I, that my dad gave me when I was like talking to him like a few months ago about it, when you feel like you don't have the control over like the situation. Yeah. And that was like the main thing. And then it's up to me to like reinstate if I have control over like the situation like that. I, at, at that point, that, that, that's like, like down to me. When I get like anxiety, it's like, yeah, I'm not like one of those like, people that's like, oh my anxiety is so bad again. No, I just don't want to check that, but it's like, when I feel like a situation is like fucked up, like that's when I get bad anxieties because like I feel like I'm not in control of what it's something we do. And then we had the mutual things that we agreed on that made it fun. But then when it comes to like running shit, it's like there's like a major like this like like it's like not major, but it is major when yeah. it comes down to like being a like duo like partnership type thing because like it's just like okay like there's big style things that are like evidently different about us like like how we talk to people just like how we act and shit like that's like major at times yeah um with the whole like 50 50 thing it's just like i don't think like that's like existing yeah it's because like it's like not going to be yeah it's because like and the the way that i play things out with good times was for the sake of you because when I thought about it because there were times when I was like damn like they kind of like you know doing a lot more the magazine is like way more like passionate about it than I am currently which like made me feel kind of weird because then like I was like oh like am I good enough for this like I don't think I'm like doing enough like in life and shit or whatever 
Yeah. Is because like I like knew that you didn't want to do YouTube anymore, and I knew that you still wanted to edit, to edit videos and do all that shit and like just have like something to work on and be productive at. So at the times that I was quiet was because I was like, okay, like like Tate is very like you know he like has to do this. It's like it's it's not gonna like. There's like oh boy that everyone has to film and shit and like when you're creative it's like totally it's like like you like have to and shit and you weren't getting that from YouTube anymore and like I was like okay like I can clearly see that you know it's like it was like a big deal for me because I thought for like our friendship it was like we started this a year ago mm-hmm. I like to end it a year from now and like be able to like yeah. celebrate and like be here with all the people we've met and shit and been able like, to like have a good time mm-hmm. with this year and then fucking be on that stage with only people we fuck with and that fuck with us for stuff we've made and like two days go by you know we've been filming the documentary we're working on clothes we're working on other shit and it seems to be just fine we're laughing making jokes um like nothing even happened like this uh, argument that we just had was insanely minor and you know we're back to our issue two shit and we're about to have this amazing show until um, you know we, later that night we had all of our homies come over it's the night before the show we're celebrating we start playing the documentary what we had for it we know get hyped and as we're watching the documentary you know notification after notification starts slowly coming in Tate did this with this girl. Tate fucked over this dude in business. Tate didn't pay for this. Tate's a fraud this. Tate's a scam that. Now it's public enemy number fucking one in Sacramento. And it was real weird because none of this shit was true. And we're just all laughing on the couch like, yeah, like, we know you. We know these people as well. This is obviously orchestrated by one person and one person only. And that's Elliot Rogers. And you know. We're not going to let this get in between, you know, us having fun tomorrow. And then Elliot entered the chat and now it's uh, personal because he's bringing up Nelson and things that Nelson said about me, which are along the lines of, you know, shit that he said that wasn't true. Like all his friends just accusing him of some dumb shit that like isn't true and just is like way out of, like just shit he wouldn't do and everything like we don't really need to get into detail about that um and it just showed me like these people that he thought were his friends um don't need to list like names because you know who the fuck you are and it said they were supporting him like pushing him creatively just turned on him like that for absolutely no reason when he needed them the most like the fashion show that's a big deal like it takes a lot of work um so i think in that sense everyone showed their true colors like your friend is doing something big for his brand and for his magazine and like this is the time you take to make shit up and make a scene i think it showed that these these people were shitty people and i think anything that you were doing with them in the past like you can do 10 times better by yourself without having having any of that negative energy bog you down like you don't want these fake people surrounding you life's too short to be like have all these toxic toxic people with you i think so yeah i guess that's my answer like Anything that you were doing in the past, like now you have full creative vision of, and like I trust that, and I think you could do better shit without them. I asked him if it was true one last time, if he said this shit, and he said no, and then went to the bathroom. And once everyone else, the 12 other people, uh, had a moment to uh, have Nelson not hear this shit, um, they went to me and said, yo, I uh, hate to break it to you, Nelson's been lying to you. He's been lying to you for a long time because we didn't know you didn't know this shit. And Nelson got out of the bathroom and it basically was just this big fucking argument of, hey, I love you, dog. Come to the fucking show tomorrow, but get the fuck away from me. <sighs> yeah.
I said, girl, why you keep calling? I said, girl, why you keep calling? Yeah. She said, I need a new him. Yeah, cause I know that you're still ballin'. She just wanna go back to the future, so I brought that girl a DeLorean. 21 minutes until I gotta go, so I told that girl I'm gonna slaughter it. That's the first time we like reacted and saw the magazine together. Okay. Um, so it's like, you know, we've been putting it together for the past year. Yeah. And this upcoming Saturday, 
Um, we're doing like a fashion show with all of our new clothes and old clothes that we're putting together. Yeah. Which at the time like sounded like a really good idea, like a really good idea. Basically as like the weeks kept like progressing of like us like trying to like work on like every issue and stuff like that, it like had become like more clear on how like much I like didn't want to do it. Your friend is doing something big for his brand and for his magazine and like this is the time you take to make shit up and make a scene. This show was the one year thing. It was the most awkward fucking thing I've ever fucking experienced in my entire fucking life. Good times like this documentary was an uphill story to the highest degree and there was nothing that was interesting in it. I told you I'd be fine